Enix rather, um, they are they do favor a lot on their Baron's um, band out. It is quite a priority. Oh, we actually do see that band out that Fox probably going for that digit and then of course in response to that we do see a Baron. I'm sure your microphone out of appears to be robotic again, so I'll just Yep, yep, I'm back, I'm back. You're back, yes, good. So I think go. yes, I'm back. It's just expected. Lyra, if she's not banned out, she's definitely first thing to team A. And again, we're seeing a lot of emphasis on Kestrel. Kestrel has really seemed to become really strong in the meta, um, given that Baron and Inks are generally banned away, and Vox is always, um, almost always banned away or, or picked quite early on. We see, we've seen a lot of emphasis on Kestrel, because you can either go Crystal Jungle, which was on the last game, which was well played for him, was played extremely well, or she can go to lane and work with Harry. Glaive Bam, Glaive's a really good flex pick and they don't want to play it really. And Glaive's actually a really good weapon Glaive. It's really good into a, into a Kestrel, so you can afterburn her out of position and then, then you're in a lot of trouble. I think, okay, they're going to ban the Grace. They want to pick one healer and ban away the other meta healer. It's unlikely that they're going to pick Adagio, but they might. They might not want to give away the double heal um, adagio Lyra combination. It's, yeah, it's a bit unlikely. They're more likely to pick a Catherine. Um, Catherine works well with Kestrel, or they could go more flex captain or jungle. And they're just going to go Arden. I think Catherine's not going to be picked up against them because they've already picked Lyra, so they're, ha they're happy to pick up Arden instead. Well, yeah, definitely. I must agree with you. Um, like, like I said uh, before, I went all robotic. It's that the side of Enix really favors and really like that Baron pickup. And, and, and it's quite interesting. Uh, Popeyes do pick up on that and then immediately ban the Baron following the second ban. Um, we do see a Samuel being picked out um, for the side of Enix. I think it's a rather strong pick. If if Enix do go for the triple comp, which is highly unlikely because uh, Castro is already being picked out, so they might just settle for that um, uh, Idris, which they do. Yeah. So there you go. So I, I like the team comp coming up from the side of Enix. I think the side of Popeye should respond to that Idris um, with a really good... Um, um, uh, jungler, uh, early crystal jungler, or, or maybe not even crystal jungler, just go for the Grum Joe and then put Crystal Castro in lane. Although that is a lot of risk doing that, but again, Grum Joe can take out that Samo in the early game. If not, I'd then like, Crystal I'd, Batiste. I'd like to see a Batiste here because he's so good against Idris. And if you can ordain Samuel when he's drifting dark, is coming, is a, in moving in any direction really. Then he's either going to have to block to stay in his drifting dark, or he's going to be uh, stuck outside of it after a little bit. And so I'd like to see that with a lane weapon Kestrel. Lane weapon Kestrel is good into Idris. They've banned away Glaive, so they can't pick Glaive, who's also really good into Idris. Yep. But lane weapon Kestrel is, is one of the best ranged uh, weapon power heroes uh, against someone like Idris. They could try and outpoke the Sammy with someone like a Celeste. Don't think it would be smart. They're going to try and outpoke the Sammy with a Scarf. That's risky. Scarf and Samuel both have very similar types of poke. They're both directional, um, directional um, projectiles being fired. Samuel obviously has two. Scarf only has one. I think this is it's going to be hard for Popeyes to execute this properly because I think the Samuel um, can poke out quite well, and then he can aggressively drift in dark and go in with Idris if they want to go in. But I think it's definitely possible for Popeyes to pull this off, and if they do. They have much stronger, much more damage. Scarf will out damage Samuel, and Weapon Kestrel will out damage almost anyone. So it's going to be hard for us to pull it off. But if they do, they probably will win. Well, yeah, game. definitely. I must agree with you. But then there is one thing I must say the Scarf pickup, it's a rather peculiar one because we both of us, we are expecting that Crystal Batiste because Batiste is just so strong into that of Samuel. Like we've seen and witnessed in the past, maybe not in Southeast Asia, but in NA and EU. Um, usually, because with the Batiste being opened up and it's free for all to pick, and, and if you do see your opponent coming up with that, Samuel, of course, your next more intelligent choice would be that of Batiste because of your ordained, like you said. And, and also, Fearsome Shade, when you actually hit that level mm. 6, kind of pushes uh, Idris away or pushes Idris' mm. team away when Idris is Shimmer striking into you. So, I, I think it's a good pick for the Batiste, but then if they do not pick it up, then Scarf, I, I think it's an iffy pick. And like you said, um, that team comp coming up from Popeyes, it's executable. It's just not that easy to execute. 
execute. But then if they do pull it off, they might um, come out on top of Enix. Anyways, I'm quite interested to see how this Chingy would actually pull off the scarf. Not exactly a very strong early game hero because we did see Chingy on that Gromjaw, on that Koshka, and Chingy kind of excels in the early game um, mm, hero. Yep, so I'm, I'm interested to see how Ching is going to pull this scarf off. And of course, on the side, I'm not discounting the side of Enix as well. Um, Enix, they have a very meta comp, they have good poke, they have a very balanced and easier to execute uh, comp with that Lyra, Idris, and of course, Samuel. So it, it really just goes down to late game and who can snowball in the early game, if not the late game. Yeah, I think I, Udai, on this Samuel should have a really good job. Um... Really e quite an easy time invading Scarf in the early game. Because Samuel has such a strong level 2 power spike that he can um, really push Scarf away from her jungle. Scarf is currently taking the back, so which is smart. You want to get Scarf leveled up. Actually going for the tree in, and they're looking to fight 2v3. Samuel's at the backs. I think Popeyes do know, which is why Aeon's going to take him down. He's going to go back to his lane, try and farm up. It just was trying to invade, trying to get some, uh, trying to get the mid tree in away. But he's not quite going to get it. He's just going to pick up, go back up to lane. And he is 1v2, so he's not going to be too aggressive. But I, th I think, as you said, with the Lyra, if they, if they get slightly overextended, slightly caught out, they've got a Lyra and Peel system to keep them healthy, and so they'll be, they'll be, they'll be fine. But if um, Popeyes get caught out, if you're up against an Idris who can secure kills like no one's business, and you've only got a Vanguard to try and keep you alive, which once the Vanguard runs out, you, it's no longer, you no longer get about it. Whereas once the heal runs out, you still have your health. And I think Shingy will secure this. Yeah, you're not going to steal that away from the Scar. So Shingy happy to get that um, mid tree in and then back off. Aeon is only level 1. Now hit level 2. And Truffy's uh, up in the lane. Just trying to just trying to farm up. I don't think Idris is going to be that aggressive compared to what Samuel should be doing. Samuel will be trying to, um, to invade Scar. Not yet, but quite soon. Because yep. obviously Scar is, is quite hard to... Fading, so you can clear the jungle so quickly. But if you could do it, someone like a Sam was really good on that. If you could do it uh, effectively, you'll stop Scarf going towards the late game, and then you can win this, win the game before um, Scarf has a chance to get. Her yeah, I, I must point out though, the team com coming up from the side of Popeyes is just so strong, so much stronger in the early game as compared to that of uh, Enix. And I'm quite surprised to see Popeyes not. Um, doing any early game whatever sort of invade at all and and, and it's quite it, it, it's quite confusing to me how Papa is playing because we do actually see Chingy on that very um, on that scarf and, and he's used to doing this early game invade oh there might be some pushing coming up from the lane Chingy is going for the turret Spitfire followed by a uh, group yeah the scarf knows how to burn the turret down very quickly we just managed to uh, pick up a couple of CS before porting home that left Popeye is being able to push push this turret just a little bit. But that's but Idris has now got his heavy steel, really good um to just get to walk, get clearing farm reasonably pretty quickly. Because you you're so slow at your level at your level one farm clear without any items. And he's actually gonna get no, he's gonna get for the farm instead of the turret. Because Scarf isn't gonna vote out to lane that much. We saw her get um, a goop split by our goop onto the turret just to to burn it down as much as possible. So she's not going to go constant lane, she's going to go solo, solo jungle. You'll really see it's about four minutes in. So three and a half minutes in, Scarf's already level three, level five, might even be level six if she takes the Zelda tree. It doesn't look like it's going to be contested. So that's really good leveling for Shiggy. She's um, actually slightly ahead of Samuel on CS, which is so important. Uh, uh, sorry, on CS, and um, even on levels as well. Ooh. Come on, you go, oh, we don't much damage as he's going to fight. The Aeon's actually going to fall to the last of Samuel. Shiggy's even lower than uh, IQ, much lower than IQ die. And Chuffy's just going to poke this turret down. And that was a really good counter engage from Enix. It looked like they were behind after the Bob Monkey went very low, but then IQ die went in with the Drifting Dark, very aggressive, and, and killed uh, Aeon so quickly. This might even be a turret. Kesh is now back, so they're not going to dive too deep. Chuffy just wants a little bit more poke, and I think Spectre is going to back off. I agree, I pop a potion, and he'll go to his backs. Same with Scarf. Uh, she didn't really want to be fighting a lane there, she just wants to follow up. Now he's level six, one and a half minutes in. Really good for Shiggy. Out leveling, I agree, die, and out jungling him as well. 
It's really, really good for Popeyes, even though he needs one that team fight. And I'm probably going to take this character, there's a lot of pressure on it, it'll go quite, quite soon. But Popeyes are probably going to have a better time when it comes to the late game if they can just uh, execute what they need to do. Just like this, get a Spitfire goof onto trophies, one glimmer shot, and he goes it's down very low. But he's just going to farm this up. Once again, Scarf doesn't need to fight, she just wants to push trophies back, make him lose a bit of CS. Yeah, um, we do see Scarf already picking up that frost burn, and on the side of Iron Ryudai, the other crystal jungler, I'm not even close to a first tier three item. So I mean, granted he's sitting on four crystal bit, uh, sorry, three crystal bit, one energy battery, and of course uh, that of a heavy prism. Oh, they might be looking for a fight. Let's right. go. Drifted dark, going sideways, gonna get some nice nice verdicts. Hope onto Aeon. Aeon's got half health from a couple of mans and empowered mans and verdicts. Um, is gonna try and spit fire his vision to bush. I knew that's gonna be able to get away with the Imperial Sigil. And Truffy's just gonna try and push his wave. That's a good look quite loud. But it's in a good position. As soon as Truffy tries to basically attack minions to farm, there was a goop in the way, so we couldn't do it. But there's another aggressive bit of dark from Argue Dice. But similarly, as Dragon's Method, no block, love the Oblivion. Argue Dice gonna pick up the kill, gonna get a nice bit of healing from that power basic attack. But it looks like he's gonna have to back off. So he did get slept out of the Dragon's Breath. That was well played from Argue Dice. Obviously, Shiggy didn't have a block and still can't afford one. But that's really going to be important for Scarf to get that Aethex block. Because the Oblivion's quite easy to land on a Dragon's Breath because you know exactly where Scarf's going to go. It takes a long time to channel, it's going to come straight towards you. So you can predict that and you can um, put, put your Oblivion down in the right position. I think that was another, another good fight for Enix, but they traded, um, they traded kills in that one. They didn't come out ahead. And Popeyes will have a really good... Well, yeah. Scarf, and especially with weapon Kestrel, if she's not behind, she'll out damage most hero tricks. Trophies is level 6, gonna smartly not face check the bush, she would have died. Pretty he... strikes onto Iron Gudai and being okay. Aeon going low for the poke, and so is Trophies. I think Iron Gudai almost has a better poke, but another Spitfire landing onto Trophies, who's gonna have to farm up to get some health. Just gonna dodge that one with the Shroud step. And Popeyes, what? Well, uh, actually, Kestrel backed off. And Enix wants to push in. Jiggy's gonna get a good goop. Lots of damage on the If he wants to farm a standard the goop, and I you know similarly, if he wants to go and just shoot off, he has to stand at the goop. And he's gonna try and poke out Aeon without taking the interest farm. And both teams back in. Well, I, I must Again, say. Not what's, what's the property going. I, I must say though, oh, Truffies is going in. Truffies is taken down really low. Chip said no one wants to go in, but Truffies does. And good. Push Scarf away, Oblivion gonna land, bouncing to use the I think you'll be okay, but that's Iron Gudai almost gonna fall to Aeon. That's the weapon Kestrel, nearly blows the damage. Truffy's trying to body block, but Muff Monkey got in before him. And uh, both both members of Enix just there, just trying to save Iron Gudai for the one shot. They both wanted to take the damage for him, but that, that's that. That's a will secure the kill. Kestrel with a very greedy port, that's always a. So, sometimes it works, it gets you to shock quick, it's obviously a diamond with Shiggy. And there's so much damage, a couple of hours of verdicts and a chakra, but Shiggy has to back off. Poet will fall. That's the first turret for Enix. We saw that obviously Weapon Kestrel has a lot of damage, but so does uh, Idris and Samuel. If, if you let yourself get hit by the double chakra, because you're standing still, you're forcing home, then Idris is going to burst you down really quickly. I, I must say though, there must, uh, I must say, I, I think it was uh, down to draft uh, for this game because um, Aeon on this um, Castro, he just don't seem as comfortable on this Castro as um, when Aeon is playing Vox because um, the whole of yesterday and for all the matches yesterday, we only do see Aeon picking out one hero and that would be Vox. So it's a rather clever Ben coming up from the side of Enix, just taking, uh, removing this fox and, and just forcing Aeon onto, you know, a hero that he's not exactly very comfortable with. I mean, just look at his KDA alone. He's sitting at 0, 3, and 1. He, it, it's quite obvious, it is obvious that, you know, Aeon is just not as comfortable on this fox as he is um, on that, uh, Castro as he is on that fox. Yeah, and then Sabu gonna go in, but I love that. We have a double hit, and then the corner's gonna come down. Bob Arden, Bob Monkey taking most of the damage, I'm sure we'll be fine with that. Shiggy's doing well on Truffy, Truffy's almost going to full boost for you. That's a nice ability to keep him healthy. I agree, he died, he did it more than Aeon's going to get. That 
kill with the catch kill. Nice. Um, our game has to do wait. Almost trolling out Truffies. He almost walked through it the wrong way, but my monkey's is going to run, run, run. Truffies will be just about okay. He's going to strike into his ally. And this will be a return turret. I don't think Truffies should even try and stop it, but he's going to. He's got an Imperial Sigil from Lyra, and uh, Shiggy's going to come up. Oh, okay. He did manage to stop the turret, so that was well played from uh, Truffies. He's got, but he's got. So for Book of Unity is going to get a little bit healthy from clearing these minions. Got an Imperial Sigil from Lyra, and the gold the gold lead is negative for either team, unless Enix wants to take this gold mine. And Kestrel wanted to fall home with low energy, spotted the gold mine moving, is now going to try and steal it. Kestrel's good at stealing gold mines, Rob Monkey needs to tank the glimmer shots, and they can secure it. Yeah, that will be easy to secure by Samuel. You've just got to stand on the side of Kestrel, and she won't be able to steal her gold mines away from you. Well, so yeah. Pushing the gold lead to Enix. They're now about 1k ahead. So that's, uh, that's good for them. Yeah, like I said, it, it is just down to um, forcing Aeon to be on a carry that it's not exactly very comfortable with. Um, we must agree, Aeon is this one trick pony. They might be able to take this first turret down yeah. if they do. He's got to secure that turret. Here's the Dragon's Breath. There is the Oblivion from Sabu available, but you're not going to use it yet. Uh, get yeah, the dragon but there it is trying to kill the color like Aeon, but it is blocked. You're blocked with this boy just to keep Aeon alive. I you die still nice and healthy, quite, quite low on energy, Samuel. So they might be able to get this turret. Aeon actually wants to put home and just will and just run away, leave this turret to die, and just try and get some farm after. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, that turret was a definite for the side of Enix and Enix coming to this game looking very strong against Popeyes even forcing Chingy to go onto a hero that we do not see Chingy very often on and that is that scarf um, like like we said we, we must agree that in draft um, Chingy would have a better chance better odds going against the side of Enix with that Crystal Batiste pickup um, but then again it, it, it's down to how comfortable you are in that hero as compared to how um, well that hero is played um, or how well um, that hero is in the meta so uh, honestly I, I still think I still think for the late game if um, the side of Popeyes can hold out they would have the better comp um, as compared to um, that of uh, Enix but then the problem with Castro is that if you force Castro into turtling up like we saw when um, the side of um, Elite 8 forcing Infamous to turtle mm -hmm. up um, when Infamous was on that Castro, um, they just fed really badly. Ooh, Trappies is going in for Chingy. Good poke. Good poke from Enix. Castro's going to uh, secure that trim, but good balance. Uh, malice and Venix were good from Samuel. Try to land. Got a shot from Bob Chingy, but he's now going to test point. He's going to be Atlas, but get a lovely heal to keep us to help the air. wants to go to the backside, but Trappies is going to boost away smartly, get away from that Crystal Sentry. Bit of poke from the uh, Shackham. And Enix could try and take the sentry. It's just walked all the way around the jungle. We're gonna go for a go for a quick quick stroll. This <laughs> sentry just to follow you, but that will be the first life eliminated. It was so far away from where um, Popeyes thought it would be. We expect the crystal sentry to be in your jungle near your back, so it was just by the gold mine. So they couldn't really go and contest that. And that'll be another decent payout for Enix. They're just pushing their advantage. Contraption on Lyra is so good. He's already picked up the Echo, so that's either a double Imperial Sigil, a double White Lord, or a double Arcade Passage. You could really use the Echo on whatever's best for each particular team fight. And Sammy with a Broken Mid is a good time for Enix to fight. And Kestrel has got a lot of pokes, they need to be careful about that. Especially if do hurt Rob Monkey, and here's going to be double sun on the corner. Wasn't blocked up, Chicken the Dragon's Breath. And that's going to be, I you know, going very low, but he's Sammy, he's going to sustain so much just from that, just from dark. And the block is going to come out of from the uh, from Tessa Boy on the Oblivion, and I you die. Going to try and keep this turret alive. Truffies getting a tree to keep himself healthy, and that's Popeyes backing off. They don't want to don't want to go any further. And I you die with the journey boost. He's going to go in. He's got to boost up that inning. Another 12 seconds. Shiggy taking some poke, giving it back herself. He's doing well to dodge these uh, massive verdicts from Samuel. He's almost going to. Oh, this one two more. This is going to save Samuel. And Truffies jumped in a little bit too late. Aeon is there. Shiggy and Aeon are both so low. Truffies could go in if he really wants to. Nope, he's just going to farm up, get nice and healthy from those minions, and uh, probably take some jungle away. Just mid some fun. Don't want to risk any more. 
Well, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, good fight for me. Let's Yeah, it, in that team fight, it was just I angry you die, just miscommunicating with that team. I mean, I angry you die went in really, really deep on that Samuel, just trying to take Chingy down on that scarf, and there was Taz Boy there and Aeon to just back um, Chingy up, and I angry you die did not manage to. Uh, score that kill. Um, granted, th th there's chase potential for, for Samuel. Yeah, you're in Drifting Dark, you have your Malice and Burdick, you can chase very well, or rather, you can kind of full chase very well. Um, but then, of course, uh, we, we cannot forget the fact that Truffies is, is, is there and Truffies has got damage in a 1v1, in, in a all out team fight. Um, I don't see the side of Harpies winning at all because Truffies know that their targets generally would be that of Chingy because Aeon is just so paralyzed on this um, Castro. There was, th there's really nothing Aeon can do. For every Glimmer shots that he shoots out, I and Gudai can just um, sustain back and just recover back um, with his passive. Ooh, there's a boy is going in. He needs to try to set up a gang, but that's the point That's how he's looking at a four. He's about to, but it's too late. And that's the camera trap. Could get a double stun castle, not gonna risk it. If that was me, I would. And tried to get the stun and then died, but Aeon far too smart for that. Just backing away, not being too not being too risky, and it is well waiting. They're waiting in Popeye's jungle for Popeye's to rotate down. But it just threw a shack out towards the um towards the Kraken and it was yeah. flared out by Popeye, so they knew that there was a shack so they knew where it was coming from, they knew where it was going, they knew it was an interest. One shot just to help Enix secure this crack. <laughs> very, very nice uh -huh. to get help out. They basically have a much, much slower crack there than okay. Estral probably thought. So that would be re cracking. It's probably just going to be the one turret that um, Enix is going to get. They might get a second, but I doubt they're going to push this for the win. Scarf and Kestrel can kill Kraken very quickly when they're trying to defend it. And Truffies is not good at pushing Kraken. He's more of a team fight hero with the Triss. You could only really shack them for a poke on the turrets. So I don't, well, I don't expect them to actually team fight here. Yeah, but I'm not surprised if the side of Phoenix do actually go in for a team fight right now. Yeah, they are going to go in. There's the Gauntlet. And now got, it's got the Echo for the second quarter. And it was not used. It was on the Vanguard by accident. So there's not a second Gauntlet for Tom Tesseroy. Chicky's going very low. So it's out there's the white ball walk the arcade passage. But I argue that's not going to follow it. This is going to try and push the Taurus instead. They push Popeye to their crystal sentry. But Monkey's going to try and stop the port. He will stop both carries porting. Kraken's just hanged on the toes. Aeon's not going to get killed. Truffy's going to secure that kill. Shaq from the Shingy. Truffy's just going to chase, chase, chase Shingy. He's like, okay, I'm going to turn on you. I've got a sentry. You've got nothing. And I'm just going to port home. Truffy's going to dive for him. He's going to stop Shingy porting. Very smart. Truffy's, he, he knew that he could either run away and let Shingy port and he'd have to port home, or he just died to stop Shingy porting, let Kraken get a second turret. And Popeyes did decide to engage with the Gauntlet. I think they should have just backed off, waited for um, Idris to engage, and then countered by just defensive Gauntlet and going under their turret. But it will say outcomes are still very similar. Kraken gets two and a half turrets. I'm sure Enix will be happy with that. 400 gold for them. And only one very crystal turret, and Idris can easily backdoor that turret. There's no question. If he's not spotted, he can either do the wall jump, if, uh, if he trusts his ability on that uh, big side wall, or he could just walk through the lane and he can easily back that door. Yeah, but we do see scout traps are in place in the entrance of the red side space, just, just so to prevent that back door. And, and we do see a lot of Idris's actually just going in for the back door. Anyways, we do see infusions being picked up on the side of the blue team. Truffis is going in, standing on the group right now, taken down to a half health. Low is coming through, but that's the oh, stand up in the corner. The Truffis is the second corner. Argue is going to get stand up again. So well played from Tesla Boy. That was into slightly out of position, but Argue has got a nice bit of heal. He's even harvest and it's drifting dark. They've gone under sentry, but that's a big heal for Blyra. But Argue died out of energy. He went for the journey boots. He hasn't got that sustained energy, energy sustained from. Um, from having House of Chargers, so he's going to get some potions. That was Idris slightly out of position. Lyra came down. Oh, he but Idris is already yeah. back. So he strike um, on top of Iron Gudai, but Iron Gudai was stuck on top of the Gauntlet. So Idris uh -huh. knocked out and got stunned again by the Gauntlet. There was a second Gauntlet, which stunned again Iron Gudai. So it's unfortunate for Idris. I don't think it was, uh, a, it was poor plays because you don't expect your carriage to be standing on the Gauntlet wall when you try and uh, jump, in, jump into them. And yeah, so it was unfortunate. A good poke from Shiggy, they managed to get the goop onto uh, trophies.
Well, yeah, definitely. That was really good play coming up from Chingy. Um, I, I, <laughs> there's something I must point out to the viewers, though. Uh, both of these teams, although we, we see it objective-wise, eh, um, it's kind of lean, leaning towards the side of Phoenix. But then, if you're looking at goal difference, it is negligible, right? It's just a 1k goal difference for the side. Oh, they might be. Well, they want the Kraken. That was argued. I take the Kraken with Enix. Well, Popeye said, no, I didn't even know they were taking the Kraken. I thought they were just backing off. And so that's such a big, um, important objective for Enix. That's an infusion for trophies. He's got his, he's got himself three damage items and a heavy steel working towards probably a breaking point in his last damage. So Popeyes need to fight now. They can't let the Kraken push. Oh. Oh. He's got the double stun. I, I, I can back in the side. Second Gauntlet is not going to be available again. Arden accidentally echoing something else. And so the Gauntlet was, Echo was, Echo was actually up when, um, when Arden used the gauntlet, so he couldn't, uh, he couldn't use that on, on the for a second gauntlet. Fountain used it. I argue that he's going to be stuck outside of his pretty dark. Truffies wants to go in. The heal, the echoed heal from Lyra, just taking Truffies back to full health. And Kraken is very healthy. There's the arcade passage to get Argue Die in. Truffies wants to go in, but he's actually not. He's just going to push the turrets. Enix just wants to take the win. And Popeye's the force to go into their base, but there's Argue Die and Truffies are on the vein. That will be game one for Enix. Really well played. They managed to sneak one Kraken and they could just team fight far better than Popeyes could. As you said, it probably wasn't the most comfortable picks for Scar and for Kessie. Well, yeah, maybe not for Scarf. I mean, we, I, I, going back on my records, I do see Chingy uh, playing Scarf once or twice throughout the series. But it is really just down to.